Hello, everyone. Today's podcast is a little bit different because I want to share with you a PowerPoint that I shared with a local hospital. And I think it is interesting because the doctors and nurses who saw it were very intrigued by it. I hope you enjoy the show. What am I? Have any of you seen this device? Chances are, you have not. This is the IASIS microcurrent neurofeedback device. It has been around for more than 15 years. I believe that I would not be here talking to you today without it. I had aphasia starting in 2014. That is a communication disorder that, if not cured by the third month, you will probably have it for life, according to the National Aphasia Association's website. It could be talking, reading, writing, comprehension, or a combination of all or some of those four. I didn't like hearing that, but we'll talk about aphasia later. The talking points for today are the day of my stroke, what I had and the deficits that it caused, the device, the doctor who made a difference, and giving back. What does it feel like to wake up in a body completely different from the one you had the night before? I woke up on March 30th, 2014, and I felt odd. I knew I wouldn't make breakfast, so I texted my friend to tell her to go without me. I couldn't read the text. It was all garbled. I didn't know at the time that I already had aphasia, a communication disorder. I put the phone down, thinking, I'll text her later when I'm not so tired. I rolled over to my right, and bam, I got the worst headache imaginable. Despite the pain, I fell asleep. The next time I woke up, I knew I was in real trouble. My right side was paralyzed. I knew that I had to get up and find help, or possibly lay there and die. I rolled out of bed with a clonk and dragged myself across the carpet using my left hand to pull me. I reached the door, which was closed, and tried to open it. The handle was too high. After many times of trying to stretch my body to reach, the door snuck open. Phew! I was so tired. I had to take a break. I don't know how long I laid there, but finally I had enough gumption to make my way down the hall. The transfer from carpet to hardwood was harder than I thought it would be. Halfway down the hall, I ran out of gas. I just couldn't move. I knew my husband would come up for soda at some point because I could hear him downstairs listening to the TV. Crash! I don't know what fell, but the noise brought my husband upstairs. Marcia, are you all right? He asked. That's the point where I realized I couldn't talk. Can you talk to me? No answer. I'm calling 911. I gave him a slight nod. He called, and then he looked around the upstairs to see what had happened to me. He couldn't find anything. So he came back and sat down beside me. When the paramedics arrived about 10 minutes later, the first question they asked was, when did she have her stroke? We were devastated. We hadn't thought of the word because I was young. I ran three or four times a week. I had normal cholesterol. I weighed 130 pounds. The next question the paramedics needed to answer was whether or not to give me TPA or tissue plasminogen activator. That's the drug that they give you for clot busting. They decided not to because it had been more than three and a half hours since I'd had my stroke. 
That was a good call. Adhering to the time schedule proved to be a good thing because it would have caused a second bleed. They loaded me into the ambulance and told my husband to drive at a normal speed. They didn't want him to get into an accident on his way to the hospital. The paramedics took me to a hospital that was not near my house. Instead, they took me to an accredited primary stroke center designated by the Joint Commission, which was about 10 miles away. I fell into unconsciousness as the ambulance rolled away. The first day in the hospital, I don't remember much. I know that they gave me some tests, but I have no memory of them. I woke up and I was in a hospital gown. I had a needle in my arm and Jim was by my side. That was enough for me. And I went back to sleep. When I woke up the next time, a PT came to my room and she told me that she was going to take me for a walk. <laughs> I went, ah, uh, yeah. So my right side had regained some mobility. She took a gait belt and put it around my waist and helped me stand up beside her. She held me up as she walked me around the nurse's station. And I would say that I was more like Igor walking from young Frankenstein than me. I was going clomp, clomp, clomp. I was really struggling. My right foot swung out to the side and dragged along the tile. I would have fallen if she hadn't held me upright. I was so glad when we got back to the bed because I fell asleep right away. So I had a carotid artery dissection on the left-hand side. Think about a hose with three segments. The interior segment tore a little bit and a blood clot formed. The blood clot eventually broke off and went to my brain, and thus I had my stroke. The doctors couldn't say why I had it. They say that one to two percent of people have carotid artery dissections. The stroke left me with a lot of deficits. I had apraxia and aphasia, which are communication disorders. Ataxia, or poor muscle control that causes clumsy voluntary movements. I had a pseudobulbar effect, which is a type of emotional disturbance characterized, in my case, by crying uncontrollably at anything. And I mean anything. Dysphagia, or trouble swallowing. I had no short-term memory. My sense of taste was mostly gone. I suddenly had ringing in the ears. To put it bluntly, I was physically a mess. I felt as if I'd been pared back and was vulnerable to, well, everything. I wanted to be back to normal. So I did everything they said to do. In fact, I said I was going to run a 5K by my first anniversary. <laughs> Big surprise, I didn't. <laughs> but the thought got me motivated. I was in the hospital for five days, two weeks in the rehab hospital, six weeks of home health care, two weeks off, and then eight weeks of outpatient care at Every place from the rehab hospital to outpatient care had speech therapy, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. And I will tell you, I was in unbearable pain that lasted for years. At the end of August, my insurance company said, okay, you're done. <laughs> I was not done. I could walk about a mile an hour for two minutes. I could not walk backwards. My foot clomped out to the right. I was in severe pain. I was not done. How do I get better? You are like the people around you. After I had my stroke, I was like a child physically. I couldn't maneuver much at all. 
although I could remember doing things like brushing my teeth, combing my hair, and walking, I needed to relearn those things. For example, I tried brushing my teeth with my right hand. It didn't work very well. I switched hands. I went to spit, and the spit kept falling on my right hand. The thought that I wanted to move my hand didn't work at the correct pace. I'd spit and try to move my hand. Spit landed on it, and it's like, shoot, I forgot about it. Just didn't work at the normal pace. I was grateful for a husband who understood. He also didn't know anything about the stroke. When I had trouble swallowing, he realized that I could choke to death. He called my sister, and she was a CPA. She put her client files on extension, and she and her husband came to see me for the weekend. They played rummy with me. They made me try to count cards. When I made a mistake, they helped me count them. They played by the rules, and I had a free pass on everything. When they first came into the room, I cried buckets. And it wasn't because I wasn't happy, because I was really happy to see them. But it was the only emotion that seemed to come out of me. And I didn't understand why. They also came because they wanted to take care of Jim. He needed comforting too. And I will tell you that you are like the five people you are around the most. These people help me become the new me. So I wanted to get better physically short term. I needed to accept who I was. I was wounded. I couldn't do anything for myself. I mean, people took me to the bathroom. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I had physical therapy for a year. By that time, I could look like I was walking normally again for a regular person on the street. But I wasn't. I was still in a lot of pain, and my right side was out of whack. To be honest, my right side is still out of whack. And if you talk to me, you might not hear me say anything. I still had aphasia. It was like there were two people in my head. So someone talked to me, and I understood them, and I had something to say back, but I couldn't say it. Sometimes I could think of something different, something more simple to say, and sometimes I could say it, sometimes I couldn't. It was really frustrating. The massage therapist worked on me for years. She worked on my shoulder first because it was the crankiest. I would say on a scale of one to 10, it was a nine and it was a nine for months. And then she worked on my shoulder and my hip and she did that for many, many months. Then she added my knee and she did that for many months. And finally she added my foot. And I would say that my shoulder was a nine my hip a seven, my knee a five, and my ankle was a three. And the loudest pain gets all the attention. I needed to do something about the pain. So I tried acupuncture. And I asked around to all my friends if they would recommend an acupuncturist, and they learned about Dr. Fuller that way. The acupuncture increased my blood flow on the right-hand side, it enhanced balance and helped me get better physically, but the pain was still there. How do I get better physically long term? Three and a half years after the stroke, Dr. Fuller talked about something called the IASIS microcurrent neurofeedback device. He gave me a URL and he said, please go check them out. If you like what you see, come back. We'll try it on you. I think this device will do you a lot of good. I went home and looked it up online. I was amazed by what it said it did. It helped people who had conditions of ADHD, anxiety, autism, depression, stroke, dementia. It had a lot of other things. IASIS doesn't treat any symptoms. It is a broad brush stroke that makes the brain reorganize itself and release itself from frozen, stuck patterns. 
I will say that I was pretty skeptical, but I kept reading. And here's what really got my attention. 85% of mild TBI patients get better. I will repeat that. 85% of mild TBI survivors got better. And here's the kicker. There is nothing that will make you worse. TBI is not the same as stroke, but the conditions are similar. Yeah, I wanted to try this thing. What is this? The device you see here is not a mouse. The two buttons on the top deliver stimuli to the fingers. It is called the brain gauge. It is a handheld device that delivers a series of cognitive tests and uses an individual scores on these tests to provide a quantitative summary of cognitive function. And I tried the brain gauge the day I started IASIS. Dr. Fuller also gave me the heart rate variability tests and found out that I had a kind of PTSD. That made sense because I had had a stroke. The IASIS microcurrent nerve feedback machine is interesting. He put bobby pins in my hair, something like cat spit on my face, you know, wet, sticky, kind of gritty. And then he put paste and electrodes on. He turned the ISIS machine on and I felt nothing, literally. Are you kidding me? I thought there would be more. But my speech was better that evening. My husband asked Dr. Fuller what he'd done. And then he said, keep doing it. I have never seen her like that since her stroke. I, I was giddy. I was happy. After 16 sessions, I talk like I do today. There's only one voice in my head again. The IASIS device. The brain is frozen in a dysfunctional homeostasis that leads to dysregulation. I'm going to interpret that as I had PTSD, so I was stuck using the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight mode. IASIS microcurrent nerve feedback causes brief microstimulation to the brain that results in a temporary fluctuation in brain waves. In layman's terms, the IASIS device uses 1 100th of a AA battery. That's not much. This temporary change allows the brain to reorganize itself. Thus, IASIS does not train the brain like traditional neurofeedback, but disentrains the brain by allowing itself to reorganize itself and release itself from frozen, stuck patterns. You do nothing when you get the IASIS microcurrent neurofeedback. This is analogous to rebooting a frozen computer. I think it helps you by restoring the neuroplasticity and my brain reconnected when the IASIS device was used. I've been writing a book about my recovery. I began on the first anniversary of my stroke and writing was so hard. I kept going off the keys on my computer. So I had to delete, 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 retype, delete, 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 retype, delete, 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 retype over and over and over. But I think maybe it was much harder because I didn't understand how to spell words again. Reading was fine for me, but spelling, I couldn't understand. So I spent hours on thesaurus.com to remember how to spell a word. I would say that the book was therapeutic. It gave me a sense of purpose. I definitely learned a lot about myself. The first draft was terrible. It had no emotion in it. The second draft was better, but there's still no emotion when I was talking about my family. None. The third draft was pretty good. I decided I would either go to print 
or I would just put it away. Why? Because it was personal. I was scared, but I decided if anyone was going to find out about the IASIS microcurrent nerve feedback machine, I tried. I needed to publish. I will tell you that that is not the only time I was scared. Every time I relearned something, walking, writing, driving, I was scared. But I did it anyway. Advocacy. Only 38% of the American population is aware of all major stroke symptoms and know to call 911 when they happen. 8.8% know about aphasia. Those percentages need to be higher. Each year, about 800,000 people have strokes in the United States. 10% recover almost completely. 25% recover with minor impairments, and I would think of myself in that category. 40% experience moderate to severe impairments that require special care. And 10% require long-term care, such as a nursing home or other facility. The rest die. I began talking in November of 2017, because that's when my book came out. And it was empowering because I could see that people who just had a stroke were looking at me and going, okay, if she can do it, I can. This year, I volunteered at stroke camp, and I am amazed by how resilient those people are. They need to get out and have their own voice as well. Do you know somebody who has trouble talking? Or someone who has brain fog? I became a certified health coach from the Health Coach Institute, and I work with brain injury survivors because, again, they want to get better. I have some tools that will help them. But somehow that is not enough. I became an IASIS certified provider provisional in April of this year. I talked to Dr. Fuller and Barry Bruder, the guy who invented the IASIS microcurrent nerve feedback device. He got to know how important the device was for me. I had a very different life because I learned how to talk and communicate again. And it was miraculous after three and a half years. Barry decided that I could be trained to use the IASIS microcurrent nerve feedback device because I was so passionate about what it had done for me. You need to know that it is unusual for someone like me to buy a nerve feedback device because Barry Bruder is very particular about who can get this device. I needed to be trained by him. And I'm a provider because Brett Fuller is overseeing me. I'm so grateful for them because without them, I'd be in a completely different place. I'd still be struggling to communicate. It's a frightening place to be. So what has changed for me? <laughs> well, I used to be a workaholic. Now family, friends, and the community are first. Today, I face my fears. There's so much in life that I am afraid of, but I still do things anyway. Every day is a gift. I don't worry about the past. I don't worry much about the future. I think about today, and that's enough. And I have learned to laugh again, sometimes at myself. In conclusion, we never know what's around the corner. Healthcare workers like the doctors, the nurses, the therapists are essential but they're only part of the key. Holistic doctors are also key. You need to combine the two to get something that makes you whole. At least I did in my case. New treatments like the IASIS microcurrent nerve feedback machine need to be talked about. And finally, I want to say again how thankful I am for Barry Bruder and Dr. Fuller to be here. Because without them, I would be in a different place.
Thank you for watching this presentation. It means so much to me. If you know somebody who you think will help from seeing it, please share. And if you want to contact me, it's Marsha at strokeforward.com. Thank you and have a nice day.